These are the most significant, two of the most significant events in my life. Seriously. My age was somewhere between one and two. I was not old enough to talk yet. But I remember my crib. It had a picture, a blue, a picture of a blue dog and I had a blue blanket. That was confirmed later because my father was into photography and he showed me pictures of it and yes, it was the crib I remember. Yeah, well anyway, I had just awakened, I guess, from a dream. In this dream, there was this absolutely fantastic bliss. It was like a constant orgasm. There were two other sensations I remember. A misty blue colored light, diffuse like the sky, and a very deep rushing sound like ocean waves but steady without the whoosh, whoosh. and the bass in it so deep I can only describe it as the whole universe vibrating. There was an article in Scientific American that talked about vibration modes of the universe and they said the tuba is missing. We don't have the spectrum we should have of all the waves of known to mankind. Anyway, then in this dream, I felt this pushing, shoving, and terrible fear. And then I woke up. And if I knew any words, I would have said, holy God, what was that? I want to go back there. Well, I read online that prenatal dreams are not that rare. Strange as it sounds, some people don't believe it, some people just say, oh, okay. But it was so real, it was, I can remember it as if it were 10 minutes ago. Then, remember now about the misty blue colored light and the deep rushing sound. Well, about 10 or 12 years ago, I read an article in Scientific American, again, by some physicist, it was just a one page article, he said, the best I can think of, uh, of a real quote, what he said was, if a human could have survived the, con the violent conditions of the early universe, supposed to be 13.7 billion years since the Big Bang, he said back then when it was much more compressed, the person, if he could have survived the tremendous violence the universe was also dense enough to conduct sound waves, mechanical vibrations. He said, now this is an exact quote, the person would have experienced a misty blue colored light and a deep rushing sound, exact words. And I almost fell off my chair. I said, could that dream possibly be some kind of remembrance of the early universe. And I said to myself, that sounds crazy. But there are a lot of crazy things. Subatomic particles that talk to each other, they interact and then when you change the spin of one, the other follows it and all that quantum stuff. One scientist recently said in a book that I read, with our knowledge of only four forces gravity, electromagnetism, and the strong and weak nuclear force. With our knowledge of that and only 12 particles or whatever it is that we know of, we are close to knowing everything, period. I said, is that ignorance, uh, arrogance, ignorance, or what? To think that we could know a billionth of a percent of all that exists. All, there's only one thing we're certain exists, and that's the philosophers call qualia, our direct immediate perceptions. For example, <clears throat> you see a beautiful sunset. What are these qualia? What are your direct experiences? Well, brightness, color orange, and a more or less circular shape. For all we know, we could be hallucinating, dreaming, on drugs, whatever. But those are our direct experiences and we're certain they exist. Only because 
they're direct. They're, they're not mathematically analyzable. Our feelings, our perceptions are not subject to mathematical analysis or any other kind of reductionism. They're primal. I don't think in the search for what's consciousness made out of, so to speak, they're barking up the wrong tree. You know how the Hindus and Buddhists believe that consciousness is what everything's made of, the fundamental stuff? I was in a Rite Aid once talking to a pharmacist from India, and there was no one else there, and we started talking about biology. And I, he was very polite and kind until I said, I understand that Eastern philosophy believes that consciousness is the fundamental stuff the universe is made of. He got indignant and he said, that is not philosophy, that is fact. He said, thank you. <laughs> How can you make something out of nothing? They've just recently proven that, um, you know, that a conservation of mass and energy. They've recently proven, uh, Leonard Susskind did, in a 10-year battle with Stephen Hawking, that information cannot be destroyed, not even by being sucked into a black hole. It's never lost. There's a fantastic book called The, Philosoph the Physics of Immortality, where he believes that God, what we call God, is the consciousness of the universe and that it's a work in progress, he says. He uses everything from quantum mechanics to astronomical observations of the most distant visible galaxies. And he believes that after possibly trillions of trillions of years, the dead will be re resurrected and all information can be retrieved. Who really killed Kennedy? etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And he got Stephen Hawking to concede that he was right. 1980, my younger daughter, Melissa, who lives in Massachusetts now, was staying with me. We were divorced, my wife and I, but we had a joint custody arrangement. But one night she was staying over with me. I had a dream that the nearby Sears store had an electric model airplane. Well, this room is full of electric model airplanes. So is the back room, from tiny ones to big ones. And they didn't have them on the market back in 1980. They didn't have lithium batteries, which are needed to have enough power to weight ratio. But anyway, just on a lark, I told Melissa about it. I said, you want to go up to Sears and see if they really have one? Because for the past few weeks, I had been having these premonition, premonitory, whatever you call it, dreams. For example, I would see a warehouse that I'd never seen before. And then the next day, working at Sylvania, we'd take a ride with my boss and see a warehouse that was just like the dream. And I started getting spooked. I didn't like that. I didn't like the feeling of the future being known, like Einstein believes the past, present, and future, or, and space are all one un united permanent thing. So that started spooking me out until I had this dream, because we went to Sears. We opened the door, and in a glass cabinet just to the right of the door was a handle with a battery in it, a wire that spun the propeller of a cheesy little plastic airplane that would just swing around. It was lousy, cheesy, I didn't want to buy it, but technically speaking it was an electric model airplane, which I had just dreamt about. So I was ready to leave, feeling really spooked now. Now, oh I forgot to mention something, three months earlier my father my, my younger daughter wanted us to visit my father. She didn't like him. He was very shy and gruff with children. Neither of my daughters liked him. They were both afraid of him. But all of a sudden, out of the blue, driving to a playground in Newton, Mass., Melissa said, I want to go see my grandpa with no hair. 
He said, well, we're almost to the playground. What about tomorrow? She said, okay. Oh. Well, went to the playground. Tomorrow came. Got a call from my sister. Dad died last night. He collapsed in her arms in the afternoon, right around the time that Melissa said, I want to go see him. So anyway, he died. Three months after was when I had that dream about the electric model plane. Now, we were ready to leave. I got an impulse to go upstairs and buy some blank audio cassettes. This is 1980. So we went upstairs, large open area, on the back wall of which was the audio video stuff. My daughter, my daughter was in front of me, walking slowly. I was following her. We were facing the back wall. All of a sudden, she stopped. Okay, I said, what? You wouldn't talk. What is it, Melissa? She said, that picture. What picture? There was a picture of my father. He had gone to their photo studio, and now and then they change samples of their work for people to see. Nobody in my family, no relatives, knew about the existence of that picture. The sales lady gave me a copy of it that I have downstairs. It's about that big. So it involved three things that my father opened me up to. By the way, a little sidebar. I read somewhere an interesting quote. A child shouldn't be looked at as a vessel waiting to be filled with knowledge, but rather should be looked at as a candle waiting to be lit. Instead of throwing all this knowledge at them, get them interested, and so on. So the three things, there were three things my father taught me about. I had a set of electric trains. I almost killed myself because I had a book on electricity, and I learned that if I connect two train transformers, one backwards, I could get about 400 volts. Now I'm only five years old. Well, being only five, sure enough, I touched the business end of it. Yeah, threw me across the room. The three things that he taught me about that I had great interest in to this day are music, and piano lessons, electricity, and airplanes. It took me for an airplane ride at about age five. And here I have this dream three months after he died, that led me to find his picture. I stopped being afraid of dreams like that. I looked at it, in fact, as the best possible evidence I know of, of there being an afterlife, that we don't know all that exists, that there's more to the universe than what we see and hear. And I took that as a gift from him, if indeed he really was in existence in some other dimension or whatever. So that's it, guys. That is the beginning of my life, the prenatal dream, and the one about my father in 1980 when I was 38 years old. Those dreams are both haunting and inspiring. You know, my wife just died and it gives me great comfort to have a, some possible evidence that when we die, we don't just disappear. In fact, what Frank Tipler, who wrote that book, Physics of Immortality, his theory is that when the universe reaches a point where there's enough collective, cooperative intelligence that we will be, the dead will be re resurrected and to us it will feel as though we died just a second ago. And now here we are in this paradise. That's his theory. That was fascinating. I hope he's right. <laughs>